alternatives for eBay. So once again, welcome to the Sunday morning show. This is the MC Face Man. All right, what is this? Top 11 other sites like eBay from N Channel. What the fuck? N Channel. What is N Channel? Just fucking right now. Do that a little bit. M uh, Amazon, Etsy. No, these are not like eBay. Maybe eBid? eBid. Why isn't eBid? What about Alibaba? I used to sell shit on Amazon too, and I actually, uh, under the name, uh, selling for tuition. So, uh, you know, if I get right, because uh, I started, I started selling shit in in, uh, in college. I would sell old textbooks on Amazon. Uh, and I've been using Amazon since like 2005, like 13 fucking years, dude. Um, and I had a, you know, I made a good, I get, I made, I made some good money back uh, selling on Amazon, and uh, didn't have to pay as much in fees. But they had like changed up the whole uh, selling uh, feature um, a few years ago, and like it just became like too cumbersome to like get started up i don't know how it is now i should probably check on it now um because i definitely i mean i probably have a couple things i would i would like to sell um that are worth selling now um that would help me out um of course any donations help uh if you wanted to go to streamlabs.com forward slash the mc face man uh you can go ahead and donate for uh you know to help support and also if i'm streaming while you donate uh you know you'll have a donation uh notification show up on the screen you'll get notified you know you'll get recognized on the stream and uh all that good stuff all that good good that good stuff that good stuff all right so let's see so yeah, I'm still looking for work. Uh, I got an interview tomorrow morning at nine. So I got a. That's gonna be like the earliest I've woken up in months, basically. I'm gonna have to get up nice and early so I can. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna walk my dog before I go or at, probably when I come back I'll walk my dog. Um, cause I mean if the interview's at nine, I should be back hopefully by eleven. Um. But who knows? Sometimes these interviews nowadays, like, you know, fucking go on, man. They go on and on. You'll be fucking sitting at somebody's fucking office for like two hours meeting like all the leadership and stuff. And it's exhausting to like keep up that that happy and upbeat per, uh, uh, facade and just like, yeah, I'm super positive. Like everything is Gucci. Like, please hire me. I have no flaws whatsoever. So, uh, ow, ow. yeah, I'm not looking forward to going back to work simply because, uh, yeah, I just am sick of the nine to five grind. But it's like, you know, I guess I'm just a lazy person because, like, I guess I have the means to uh, create and, um, you know, try to make money off of my creations. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just not – I don't have that as much business savvy as I thought. Or maybe I'm just not as hard of a worker without somebody giving me things to do. I don't know, man. Like, I know, I know a lot of people – most people work their fucking asses off. I just don't want that. I mean, isn't that understandable that I just, I just would rather not bust my ass. I'd rather have a, you know, a comfortable experience in this world. Is that, is that, is that, is that, I guess that's a lot to ask, right? It might be, it, it just might be. Let me just zoom in a little bit. It might be. It might be that I'm just a fucking uh, privileged American asshole. Because uh, us Americans definitely do have it pretty good. I'd say even the poorest among us, 
I mean, even homeless people in the United States have it better than a lot of people outside of the United States. I was just watching this little documentary. Actually, I'm going to show you some of it right now because it's very interesting. What's it? Uh, Trash Town, Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. Zabaline. I just watched this a little, a little earlier while I was... Uh, Eating my breakfast and preparing and eating my breakfast. It's the only local provider of work and livelihoods. So it's a whole town that um, the only work there is is um, collecting trash. And you got the kids working and playing in the trash and, you know, he's breaking, breaking apart fucking <laughs> spray cans and shit. Inhaling all that toxic shit. And they were saying, like, people, people only live until, like, age 55 or something like that. That's, like, the average uh, lifespan. Like, uh, most people don't make it past 55. So this nigga right here, he's probably going to be dead in a couple years. Who knows? Um... Yeah, they carry these big ass bags of trash all around. Uh, they they literally by hand sort through all the garbage. So they're like poking through. They're like, you know, digging through needles. They're um, like all kinds of germs, all kinds of bacteria, all kinds of bullshit, basically. Yeah, it really sucks. They eat pigeons. They fucking raise pigeons. Like, they were saying, like, a lot of people have that as, like, a hobby or something. Like, they, they have these pigeons or pigeon coops and, uh, you know, they raise them and they eat the, they eat the pigeons, too. Uh, what's interesting about this is that it is a, um, there's mostly Christians there. So, this is in Egypt, a uh, vastly... Uh, you know, majority Muslim, you know, it's in the Middle East. Middle East is mostly Muslim, uh, I would assume, right? And um, at least that's what Americans, us, we, we associate the Middle East with with uh, Muslims, Arabs, and things like that, right? So these guys are actually, it's like mostly a Christian town, but Muslims do live there. And, um, you know, they were talking about how they, they live together in peace and... How like the Christians are even slaughtering pigs, and how like uh, the Egyptian government had eliminated all the pigs at one point, like when the Muslim Brotherhood took over. But you know they eventually got a hold of some other pigs, or from Brazil or some shit like that. It's like just filth everywhere. It's crazy. It's the pigs. It's good to watch things like this once in a while as a uh, fucking uh, spoiled American. Uh, just to kind of realize what's going on in the rest of the world. What's, you know, that, you know, most people don't have it that good. And then, like, the next video after this was, like, this video about, um... Where's my history? I always forget how to get to history. These sites need to stop changing. Ooh, 49 subscribers. Ooh, on YouTube. What? We're almost at 50, boys. What? Yes. Subscribe to me on YouTube. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Then So, I, I was watching that earlier. And then, it like, automatically, you know, as I was taking a dump. I don't know. After breakfast, got to take a nice dump. So it was transitioning transitioning to these about Hong Kong. And I had seen other documentaries about this before, but like in Hong Kong, you know, they have really bad uh, living conditions, uh, even though it's a very wealthy uh, part of China. Um, you know, they got, it said in the, in the documentary, they got a higher GDP than in Switzerland. And in Switzerland, everything is Gucci. Everybody's chilling in Switzerland. Um, from what I gather, so, um, you got this old man living in this, like, cage, like, basically just a six by three, uh, fucking little cage, people fucking, uh, 
have to sleep in. So, yeah, it's good. It's good for perspective to kind of just realize, you know, like shit. Just it's not that bad. It's not that bad because I mean, like, 2018 has been a little bit rough for me. Um, you know, primarily because like the first six, the first half of the year, I was still working at my previous job. Oh God, I blow my nose. Hold on a second. Where's the tissue at? Sorry, I had to play my trumpet real quick. My trumpet nose. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so 2018 has been kind of rough. I mean, the first half of the year, I was still working on my last job, which paid well. I mean, I was making 60 Gs a year, but... I mean, in New York City, I mean, that's barely, that's just barely the living wage. Like, I was looking at apartments while I was working there. Like, I was thinking to move down there because, like, I was working in Bensonhurst. And uh, Bensonhurst is hella far, bro. Hella far from where I am. That's like about an hour, hour and a half, even though I, even though I live in Brooklyn and, and Bensonhurst is in Brooklyn. I mean... And I mean, Brooklyn isn't even really that big. It's just that it's overcrowded and it's hard to, you know, like uh, the, you know, the infrastructure just can't keep up with all the people. So, you know, there's a big uh, uh, highway or expressway, whatever you want, parkway, belt parkway that uh, is the quickest was the quickest way to get there by car. But that thing. Is like perpetually under construction. Like construction in New York is so slow. This unionized uh, construction, they take forever. You got like eleven guys fucking looking at one guy, fucking screw a light bulb and shit. Um, you know it's 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 whack. Like when I lived in San Antonio for a couple of years, I saw construction happen like that, bro. Like as soon as I got there, I saw some shit getting starting to get built. Because couple months later it's fucking it's, it's done it's complete because you know they got you know ununion they don't have unionized uh workers i mean uh kind of sucks for them but fuck man like uh shit gotta get built at some point because that affects other things you know when the when the belt parkway is fucked up and under construction for over a year that affects tons of other businesses that you got people run, getting to work late. You got, you know, you got people getting into accidents because, dude, like they, like they, they literally like, okay, so it's like two lanes, right? And then like maybe like three lanes, uh, you know, well, you know, it's a going and coming, right? Whatever, right? So uh, there's three lanes on each side, right? And so like on one piece of the Bell Parkway, they actually made another, put another divider on one of the lanes. So like you have like one lane that's that's blocked in with dividers. So if you get in an accident in that fucking singular one lane uh, corridor, you're fucked. You're gonna be. And I saw somebody one time like uh, stuck in, in an accident and it backed that. It was backed up for miles. And don't get me started on taking the train. Like I, like sometimes it'd be like hour and a half, especially going back home. Dude, and like I just, I just never felt respected at that job. My supervisors didn't respect me. My staff sure as hell didn't respect me. The motherfucking principal, that dick, Christopher Agno, that fucking dick. He didn't respect me from the fucking get go. He didn't want to even give me a chance. And then he was just fucking dogging me the whole time. And then when the, uh, you know, I went to collect my things or whatever. You know, like he comes down as usual to like fucking just poke his head in my fucking office, my tiny little fucking bathroom that used to be a bathroom. I had an office that used to be a fucking bathroom, still had a sink there, and I'm pretty sure like this this fabrication uh, was covering a toilet that was there, or that might still be there. So it's like uh, you know my supervisor is there when I'm when I'm getting my stuff, and uh, you know they just like. Tells them on the side, like, hey, yeah, we're letting... He's like, oh, you're letting let him go? And then he just turns around and walks upstairs. <laughs> He's like, didn't even say shit to me to look at me. I'm like, this motherfucker. 
I fucking try to be so nice to you, even though you've been such a fucking condescending little prick. Fucking huge ego, fucking asshole. I, I mean, whatever. Karma, karma gonna take care of it because that guy is too much of an asshole, dude. Too much of an asshole, dude. Like, seriously, man. Like, you did not help me at all in that job. So, like, I was I was losing my sanity at that job. Like, I did not get the support that I needed, you know? And I fucking busted my ass at that job and uh, got very little appreciation. The, the most, appreciation I, most appreciation I got was from some of the parents. I mean, I still had issues with some of the parents, but most of the parents were, were very appreciative because they had, you know, they were in this pro, had their kids in this program for basically for free um you know so you know there really is no no room to complain if you if you're gonna put your kid in a free program <laughs> it's like dude okay you don't like it fucking go pay for a good program then what the fuck but most most parents were super appreciative like gave me all kinds of gifts and stuff like you know like especially during the holidays gave me all the nice gifts and gift cards i was like okay this is this is a cool perk but it's not enough all the fucking money and the gifts it's not enough to fucking be in a fucking tiny ass office, okay, in this tiny ass cramped school with fucking looking at the 300 kids and 35 plus staff, most of which, you know, are young ass kids fucking uh, in a senior in high school or, or, you know, fresh out of high school that... You know, still haven't like built any kind of like professionalism in the you know in their skill set. You know, they're still kind of like operating like it's high school. Like, ooh, what can I get get away with uh, behind the teacher's back and shit? Like, I mean, I know how it is. I you know, I remember I was like that in high school, but I can't deal with young ass kids like that. You know, as as my employees, like as a in a, like an educator uh student educator client role fine but like as a supervisor <laughs> i can't supervise these fucking seen high school seniors and yeah, you know young kids that just fucking they're still like i like because i gotta be like that mentor or whatever to try to like you know and i'm there for the fucking young kids i'm there for the the you know the the participants like if you're fucking working for me i expect you to do your damn job i'll leave you alone do your fucking job that's how i that's every any situation that i've been in where i've had a supervisor that you know was hands off or like you know you know like kept distance you know those were great situations man those were great situations the job i had before last um i was making like almost half what i was making my last job but it was chill there. It was chill there. Other than this, other than a couple people, a couple women that that I worked with, that uh, you know, they just got on my nerves, man. Especially the girl who was like ten years younger than me, who like uh, basically supervised a lot of my activity or whatever the fuck. The coordinator, but I mean, she had supervisory roles. It was it was a shit show, and she had like her her mom was like the former supervisor, so she got like. You know, through nepotism, got, you know, uh, I mean, that's just how the world is. That's just how the world is sometimes, you know. I need a water. Two seconds. Let me get a water. Let me get some more water. Um, We'll play some more. We'll play some of this. So that you can get a taste of this other documentary that I was watching. So we'll just, I'm just too proud to seek help. do that for you. I'll be right back. Some don't take the welfare because it's shameful in Chinese society to tell someone you are on welfare. They're so stubborn. That's where Chan and his band of 200 volunteers come in. Once a week, they pack up meals from his restaurant and deliver them to even more poor, hungry residents. The government, they don't know what's happening, but we do. They are not at the front line to see what's going on. <sighs> All right. To find out the needs of the poor. See, that was quick, right? Get the real picture. All right. So, yeah. So basically, I'm trying to, you know, find some full-time work now. Um, 
you know, I feel the thing is like, I kind of don't like what I was doing at my last job. And I've, and there's a good chance I'm not going to like doing that same kind of role again. But I think if I can find a f smaller program to work with that, um, you know, it could work out if, if I have a smaller program to work with. Cause like some of these, uh, programs, uh, you know, you got like 90 kids to look after. That is like nothing. 90 kids. What? I mean, you get less staff and stuff, but that's a good thing. Less staff. You have more control over the staff, man. Like my staff, I had like fucking rebellions. You know, I had rebels in my fucking staff that, you know, even from people that I, I fucking hired myself. Like, it was nuts, dude. And, like, no one, none of those kids really understood the pressure and the fucking responsibilities that I had or any of that shit. I mean, I don't necessarily blame them because, like, they're fucking, you know, how can you be mad at ignorance, like, you know, at a, from a young person? Because, like, what the fuck? They don't know any better. Like, that's what they're, that's what they're here for, to learn. So, I don't know. I need to get a fucking haircut. Hopefully I can get one today. Since it's raining, should be should be good. Um so I've been thinking a little bit, you know, cause like man, oh I was watching this other thing. I highly recommend. What is it? Rashawn McDonald. Had this uh this interview about how to reinvent yourself. What's up, what's up? Just got done running and um I think it's a pretty good video. It it has some solid advice. I mean, there's all kinds of shit like this on on YouTube. But uh, yeah, I recommend checking this out if you're kind of in a similar position where you're trying to reinvent your life. I mean, my my life doesn't even feel like it's been invented to begin with, man. It's like I've always been reinventing myself, apparently. I don't know if it's like I have a low attention span or just haven't found exactly what I want to do my particular niche yet. Because I've tried different things. Tried hip-hop. Tried um, citizen journalism. You know, trying streaming right now. Trying to make, mu uh, trying to make uh, YouTube videos. It's tough. The thing is, uh, I don't know. Maybe I just, I'm too lazy, I guess. Or maybe I just get bored too quickly. Like, I like novelty. I like different things happening. And uh, it's easy for me to get tired of, like, a situation for a long time. Especially if it's whack. Especially if I'm not getting respect. Especially if I'm not getting paid enough or things like that. Like, if there's some major discomfort, <laughs> like, I... The more discomfort, the less likely I'm I'm going to tolerate it, which is unfortunate, you know. I guess that comes with being like a only child, fucking, uh, you know, come with a kind of spoiled entitlement. But you know, I, I'm I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it. I think most Americans are are spoiled and entitled. But if you're a, if you're an only child, I think it's probably uh, per, you know more. It affects you more. You know, uh, you know, when I grew up, I, I was, you know, I just had like my friends on the block, my cousins I would see in the weekends, but you know, I spent a lot of time just on my own for fucking just trying to occupy time playing video games or, or whatever, watch, reading comic books, watching cartoons and shit. And, uh, you know, my father was involved, uh, you know, but you know, him and my mother divorced when I was like two. And, uh, you know, I would see him on the weekends and stuff, but, uh, I feel like I missed a lot of, um, I missed a lot, missed out on a lot of the benefits of having a father in the home, which I know is, is, is so rare now. It's like, is that even the norm anymore, especially in, like in New York or some shit? It's like, it's so rare to have like a family, a full family nowadays. If you have your mom and dad and, you know, living with your mom and your dad or, your, or you know, you moved out, your mom and dad are still together, that's amazing. I, I, I salute, I clap, I, you know, that's great. That's fantastic. 
I, you know, I'm definitely envious of people like that who uh, found the one that they can tolerate for the rest of their life or the person that they love and stuff like that. I maybe could have had that. Like my first girlfriend, man, she was so dope, dude, so dope. But like the thing was... Uh, she took my virginity, so I never, I never had sex with another girl at the time. You know, she was my first. I think I was like eighteen or nineteen, and like, um, yeah, man, I was like, this is great and all, but what else is out there? Like my first try, I get this, like you know, yeah, you know, what, what else is out there? Like there's gotta be even better stuff. Like I, I guess I got greedy or something. But I mean, I mean, we definitely had our differences and things like that but the sex was great she fucking knew how to cook from what i remember that was a long time ago we're talking yeah we're talking a long time ago um yeah she would fucking massage my feet she would love giving me head for fucking long time forget what the longest session her giving me head it had to be at least an hour bro dude she used to give me head while i'm playing Metal Gear solid three dude she would give me head while we're sitting here while i'm sitting here playing Metal Gear solid that she bought for me that was dope And she still looks good. She, had, she, you know, I mean, she'd been found another dude. I mean, she had a couple dudes after me, but it wasn't too long after that she found, like, the dude. And, uh, you know, they're married now. They got two kids. She still looks good. She's a little, maybe got a little more uh, puffy in the face or whatever, but still slim and long legs. And, uh, oh, mm. But I was a little, I was a little prick then. I, I mean, I mean, I might still be a little prick, but maybe I'm a big prick actually. Maybe I graduated to big prickness. But I was a little, you know, I was fucking eighteen, nineteen, fucking. Oh, I didn't know shit, you know, fucking. Uh, I didn't know what the fuck the world was about, bro. Uh, you know. I, I wonder what my life would have been like if I had stuck with her and, like, had kids and got married and shit. I don't know. I have a feeling like I would be in some kind of fucking uh, 9 to 5. Some kind of 9 to 5 that I don't like. That's the kind of, uh, I don't know. I, I'm trying to imagine. I don't think I would ever have gotten into hip-hop for sure. I don't think I would have continued into that. Maybe. I don't know. Well the thing is when you're when I'm with someone, when I'm when I'm when I'm in a relationship with someone, I tend to just slack. And that I mean doesn't have I haven't had that many like serious relationships though. But like the big one was uh you know uh twenty ten and twenty eleven um I had started a big relationship that uh almost lasted four years. Um and like I was pretty active in the hip hop scene in New York City, but um, you know, like my girlfriend at the time like didn't want me to go out as much, and even though she went out a lot and drank and got drunk and would come home drunk. Um, but yeah, I just lost motivation. Like uh, I think that year I was also out of work, and then I think I was also on unemployment that year. Um, and I was just like, just rotting here, you know, and I just needed to escape. So that's when I left with her to, uh, San Antonio, which sucked, but it was a good experience. I definitely recommend traveling to different cities to get different perspectives and things like that. So I've been thinking about the channel and like, I'm not sure, I'm not so sure I like I don't know if I really like streaming video games, to be honest. Because, like, I don't get, I don't think I can do the best quality, the best production values with my current setup. 
I mean, theoretically, I should be able to, but I don't know. I know there's issues with, like, if you're not a Twitch affiliate, you don't get the same, um, I don't know, bit rate or, or encoding or some shit like that. And uh, I feel like discoverability is better on Twitch than on YouTube. Um, but... It, the thing is, like, I don't really, I don't really like to play games usually unless I'm under the influence, um, unless I've had my herbal medication. Uh, when I'm sober, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't feel motivated to sit down and just do one thing for so long. And like, you know, but just playing video games in particular is just, it's fun, but. You know, I, I don't know. It's it's just not stimulating enough when I'm sober. When I am medicated, it's much more enjoyable. I get much more immersed. It's a much better experience all around. <laughs> I remember when I was in Texas, right? Um, and I had gone a long... I had gone months without, without any... Without any medication whatsoever... Um, cause I was looking for a job and, uh, you know, over there they do, uh, tests and stuff down South. They do, they do those tests, um, a lot in New York city. I don't even think they, most companies, most companies don't even do that in New York city anymore. Uh, that shit just went out the window, but in the South, they still test you. So I was like worried about that. And, uh, but then like when, like after months and months, I was just like so stressed out. Like, yo, I gotta, I gotta medicate. And I remember sitting there and like, I finally, I was like, what? I was playing, just playing like fucking like Saints Row on my PC. I was like, what the fuck? What? It's so sick. Oh shit. Yeah. But nowadays, like, uh, I, mean, I got more tolerance and stuff, but like, I still feel like I need some kind of something to relieve the stress you know like if i if i felt more happy i guess and more successful maybe i would wouldn't do it as much but like i don't know man uh i i seem to always uh i don't know there's always something to kind of like that's bringing me down if it's not if it's not work it's my love life or whatever um i was I was dating a chick for a few, a couple months recently. Well, not that recently. It ended like, I don't know, a couple months ago or something like that. I don't know. It was going okay, but I don't know. We just weren't compatible, I guess. Um, and it's uh, the one before that I liked quite a bit, but I, I can also see now that we were not compatible because she was just mean to me. It's hard to find a good woman, man. Especially when you're struggling. It's like, you know, especially at my age, 33 years old, and I'm struggling. I, you know, it's it's hard. It's hard in New York City. Even when I was making 60 grand, I was looking at apartments, uh, and I have a dog too, so that makes it more expensive and harder to find uh, a good apartment. And the thing is, with my dog. You know, I'm thinking about my dog. My dog is my son, right? That's like my best friend right now. My absolute number one best friend. Um, you know, basically, uh, most of my friends are just falling off the map, you know. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it happens. It happens. And uh, I suppose that uh, the blame is should be more on myself for not finding better friends, finding more reliable friends somehow, not being more proactive about it. Because, I mean, you need people, you need relationships, you need people to talk to, things like that, you know, people that, that support you, that encourage you, that make you feel good, that don't bring you down, things like that. Because um, the world is fucking hard enough. And at this point in my life, uh, I don't need, like, a friend that roasts you all the fucking time or that, you know, it's just like, I just want to chill and, 
you know, get some support, you know, it's fucking, uh, some fucking moral support, some emotional support. It's like, Hey man, it's okay. It'll fucking, you know, I need, I need somewhere to vent my, uh, frustrations too. It's like, I don't, I don't really have that anymore. I just talked to my dog. <laughs> um, so it's harder to get calibrated sometimes. So anyways, uh, yeah, I was looking at apartments. Like I want, I want like a one bedroom. Um, also I was looking at wooden bedrooms for like, and like the cheapest I saw was like 1500 or something like that. Like they look good and stuff. I was thinking to move down to South Brooklyn, but then like the longer I stayed at that job, I was in my last job, longest, longer I stayed there. I was like, I really don't like it here. I don't even like this part of Brooklyn. Like why, why am I thinking of moving out here? Like, let me just fucking try to save some money. Um, and, and just stay where I'm at. You know, so now I'm just looking for something closer, you know, some similar type shit that I can do. But as far as this channel, guys, I don't know, man, it's, oh man, it's, it can be so discouraging starting from the bottom and trying to build a viewership and trying to be consistently entertaining and engaging with your stream. I don't, I'm not too sure, you know, it, I'm not too sure PC streaming is for me. You know, at least, at least not in games. Cause I, I don't feel like I'm, I'm giving you any kind of, uh, great content doing the games, you know, like I'm not that great at video games, you know, like my skill level is pretty intermediate. If that, on most games, there's very few games that I actually have some kind of skill with, like Third Strike or like Tekken or, or you know, some shit like that. I remember, you know, back when I went to go to arcades back in the day. This wasn't even that long ago, though. This was when Tekken uh, 5 was in the arcades. So, I don't know how many years ago that was. Maybe that was a while ago. Because arcades is closed now, but... I remember I beat my first uh, Asian in a fighting game with Tekken 5 with Steve. I fucking just did the fucking, the combo where you're just like, doof, 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 doof. and it just keeps going and going. It's like fucking unendless. Oh, it's so beast. So beast. Anyways, anyways, that's not my thing, you know? Not my thing. I'm, I'm you know? I care about music. I care about politics. I care about world events. I do care about pop culture and, you know, like comic books and movies and video games. So I think maybe I should focus more on my YouTube channel creating VODs. Um, like, like when I, when I first thought about this concept of, you know, building my YouTube channel, you know, doing like a gaming related, um, you know, channel, uh, I was actually thinking about you know, collaborating with a friend, but, uh, on that, but, uh, he never really took, you know, he never was serious about it. He would just say like, Oh yeah, we'll definitely do that. We'll do that. Uh, but never did anything to like actually move it forward. Um, and that's, that's, that's unfortunately how it is with a lot of situations where you want to collaborate with somebody. They just don't have the, the will or the work ethic to try to build something. Um, you know, I've been a part of a couple of, of groups and things like that. And, uh, it seems like I'm usually the one that's like pushing for like, oh, okay, let's do this. Let's do that. You know, it's like pulling teeth. It'd be cool to actually like meet somebody who's like even more motivated than me that, uh, is willing to build something together. Cause I, I would be like, oh shit, like, let's do it. So I guess I just need to network more and find those people. Like, where are these people that want to build shit? Cause like, I don't want to do this nine to five working for assholes thing. I want to work for myself. I tried that once, like legitimately tried, uh, you know, my own photo shoot, photo booth business, traveling photo booth business. Did that for like a year, wasted a bunch of money on a fucking heavy ass, bulky ass photo booth equipment. Um, that didn't, it, 
it, it started out pretty good, but then like not so much once the summer came. But that wasn't my dream. That was like my ex's dream at the time, like my girlfriend's dream at the time. I I I did that. I invested ten G's into that shit to try to like save our relationship and stuff. Cause like it was just we were just having arguments all the time, like every month, like crazy arguments. I'm like, yo, you fucking bitch. Like, oh, you're an asshole. Like, oh, I hate you. Ah, like shit, like that, dude. It was really sad and depressing. Like. And then, like, she stopped having sex with me, gained a bunch of weight, and it's like, dude, and, like, the heat and the bugs and the, ah, it was tough. It was tough. I definitely, uh, definitely glad I'm in New York and not in San Antonio, Texas. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you that, because, whoo, going there just helped me to tolerate New York a little more. But I don't know how much longer I can stay here. I mean, shit's just getting too expensive. You know, I was looking at uh, Cleveland. How you know? If you look at my YouTube channel, I did go to Cleveland 2016 for the RNC. I did some citizen journalism there, some independent citizen journalism. And a lot of the people there were really nice. And uh, things are really cheap over there, four hundred dollars a month. Like, hey, I don't need nothing too special. I just need my own spot, place for my dog to run around. You know, like a little backyard or something, and you know, food on the table. Fuck it. Like, I don't need all. I don't need too much. You know, maybe travel once in a while. I'd like to be able to travel to a different country every year, at least one. That'd be great. I want to go to. I'm, I wanted to go to Barcelona this year when I lost my job. Uh, I couldn't really do that anymore, so that's why I went to Phoenix, Las Vegas, L.A. Did that trip instead. But in 2019, I gotta go to another country because I had told myself in 2017. When I got back from Romania, that I got to go to a different country every year. Got to make it happen. And that's what I got to do. I got to make it happen, man. I just got to go. I got to figure it out. Just fucking get up and go. There's too much out there in the world to just be like stuck in this same place, same people, same bullshit every day. Because there's answers out there. There's all kinds of answers. Like shit you never even, you know, ways of living you never even thought of. Situations you never thought of. If not a better situation, a worse situation to help your current situation look better. So either way, traveling is good. It's the best learning experience you could possibly have. You know, maybe maybe instead of uh, you know four years of college, it should be like two years of travel and two years of college. I don't know. Obviously, I don't have the answers. I'm constantly looking for the answers, but I don't have the answers. Okay. So, why don't we look at some gaming news? What do you say, guys? Should we look at some gaming news? Let's see. I don't really want to open it in this browser. All right, we're going to look at some gaming news. So, uh, recently, I haven't been, like, the past week, I didn't stream all, the past week or two, I haven't streamed all that much just because uh, I was, you know, that's like my medicated week. I needed some, you know, medication. So, that, that it's hard to be motivated when you're medicated. Let me tell you that much for sure. But it's necessary, or else I'm gonna turn into an uh, aggressive fucking uh, alpha beast. You know, I want to like kill everything. That's just how it kind of goes. Can I please mute this? Firefox, why aren't you giving me the option to mute this? What's going on? Oh, thought it was okay. I was wondering why that thing didn't pop up. I don't know. When you have when you have the dual display, it just glitches everything up. It's annoying. Anyways, so we're gonna do what we do every Sunday. 
We're going to go through the gaming news on destructoid.com, my favorite place to read the gaming news. And I need to start getting back into reading up on uh, regular news so I can talk about that too. Um, I just like... Because, like, you know, ever since Trump got elected, like, it's just like in the news, everything is about Trump. It's so tiring. It's so uh, exhausting. Uh, like, I'm so fatigued by it. Like, I don't care, dude. Like, I know. Yes, he's an asshole. Okay. Like, all that, like, you know, you know it's like 95% of the mainstream media is against him. So, like, when you just hear the same shit over and over, no matter what it is, it gets annoying. And it's just like, I, I believe you less. Because you're just, just whining and bitching about this, you know, the smallest things. It's like, why don't you talk about what exactly is wrong with the policies instead of, like, shit he says or uh, tweets and stuff. Like, you're just giving him more shine and keeping him more in the public. I mean, he, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he won again in 2020, to be honest. But... Whatever, man. Like, most people are, are really stupid. They don't understand psychology. So we're looking to... Since Sunday the 25th. Go back to Sunday the 25th. The beginning of the week. It's a lot of news. A lot of news. Oh, boy. Whew. That's a lot of news. We're gonna... Oh, boy. That's a lot of news. Shite. I want to do a uh, video like uh, like my PlayStation Classic is better kind of video and like just uh, talk shit about the PlayStation Classic and just, you know, show gameplay for like the 20 uh, PS1 Classics that I have in my collection on my PS3. So that's my, my idea for my next YouTube video. Um, ideally I'd like to get it out tomorrow since, since, uh, the PlayStation Classic launch, uh, launches, releases tomorrow. Uh, I gotta, I gotta hook up my PS3 to the Elgato and everything and, I don't know, hopefully I don't have any issues with that because I gotta use like a splitter or some shit with that. I gotta put that splitter to use. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried the PS3 with my streaming setup yet so we'll have to figure that out just so I can use uh, I can use OBS to capture the footage all right let's see here what are we looking at we're still not at uh, November 25th guys and I think this is the last one we looked at Let's see, review, Spider-Man Turf Wars. I've been hearing some, you know, what I've heard about this deal, the DLCs that have been coming out for this have been a little bit disappointing. It's been a little bit disappointing. Let's see the trailer. Thing is, I'm a gentleman. You'd have knocked. You could have come right in. But you had to go and sneak around. Time to bring the fear back. Good evening, New York. Welcome to tonight's entertainment. The changing of the guard. Tonight, the good old days are coming back. I mean, from what people have been saying is that it's just been like an excuse to get new costumes and stuff. So you're just getting challenges and new side things to do which is fine oh that's a nice uh drawing painting whatever pretty cool hmm i mean i like that i like that i like that it's a different suit huh yeah it's a nice suit it's like a cross between the new one and I don't know, one of those neon lighted ones. Got the bling, oh homie. Got that. I wonder if it spins. Does it spin? Hammerhead got some taste, homie. 7.5? Really? Hmm. 
The DLC continues to sprinkle in a few new mission types, and those of you who hate those Mary Jane stealth scenes, I actually like the the Mary Jane solid. Mary Jane solid, baby. In, uh, in the main game, those were actually uh, not bad, actually. Even though they weren't all that, you know, complicated or anything. 100% in control of Peter, Spiderbot, you're getting three new suits, more general open world missions, mostly base assaults and more screwball shenanigans. It's another hour if you rush and an extra half hour if you do everything kind of DLC. That's really whack. That's really whack. An hour of gameplay and you're paying nine, ten dollars. For one hour of gameplay, what? What? Ten dollars for one hour of gameplay? What kind of ripoff is that? What kind of shit is that? I hate when they do that. I hate. I hate when they give you like an hour, one hour of DLC. It's just like filler garbage. In a way, I, I'm kind of okay with it because then I don't feel like I have to buy it. I don't have to spend the extra money. I, you know, I just get the full enjoyment out of the the main game, which nowadays games get so bloated. Now it's like there's sometimes too much in the main game. You know, Spider that wasn't the case with Spider Man, but like games like Assassin's Creed Origins, which took me a while to beat. It's a hell of a long fucking game. Um, Red Dead Two is is turning out to be really fucking long. I'm at 60% complete, but I don't. I wouldn't say there's that much filler in it. It's really well made. There's good stuff in there, although I think they could have made a lot of more uh, quality of life improvements with that. Um, they really should patch it, but they don't give a shit because they're making fucking setting sales records. So what the fuck do they care? They don't even. But you know, they should they should fix some things, add some quality of life improvements. What I love about CD Projekt Red is. When Witcher 3 came out, they kept doing more and more quality of life improvements along with fixing bugs and things like that. But they actually made the game significantly more easy, uh, more comfortable to play, more enjoyable to play over time. That's why uh, so yeah, CD Projekt Red is probably like the, the best, objectively speaking, like the best developer right now is CD Projekt Red. Like they're they're on fire. Uh yeah, so I don't think I'm gonna get this DLC, man. I don't think I'll ever play this DLC. Like Black Cat, she should have been in the main game because you had this whole like set of challenges that involve her and like you get you hear her voiceover, but you never actually see her. You never actually see her. So what the fuck? You know? What's the point of that? But whatever. I don't care about that. What do you what games do you play when you're sick? I usually don't play games when I'm sick. I usually don't feel like doing shit. I usually would rather just sit down and watch Netflix and just lay in bed and just play. Like, I'm 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 rarely sick. Anyway, but when I am sick, I am very sick. So I'm just like in bed, like, no, I'm just watching the thing. I'm, I'm fucking Stephen Hawking in the bed. I'm done. A chat with Sega's first lady of RPGs, Reiko Kodama. Kill the kill the game. If. Announces new fighters. Is ooh, that a fighting game? Let me see. Is there a trailer? No? I don't know. We'll wait for the trailer. Review Haunted Island, a frog game, a frog detective game. That's interesting. 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 Eight. Eight. Not bad. Luckily, a, the Haunted Island serves as a fantastic introduction to a world and characters that are just too cute not to fall for. It may not look like much at first glance, but there's something pretty special here. If the playtime had been stretched out a bit longer, some fatigue might have started to set in. But the pacing is so brisk that I immediately I was immediately itching for more. Okay. 
Oh, okay, that's... I usually just read, like, the bottom... Like, the, the conclusion. I'm, I'm guessing this is some kind of, uh, adventure game. Like a point and click, possibly? I don't know. Fire Emblem, no care. Best Switch Cyber Monday deal is $85 worth of freebies. What do you mean? Oh, gift cards with the purchase. I already have my Switch, so I'm good. Been had it since launch. Though I barely play it. Because, like, I keep it in the case. I bought a nice little case for it. I envision myself, you know, taking it places to play at, you know, a different, you know, take it to my boy's crib or, you know, take it to work. But, you know, I never really panned out. But that's, that's cool. That's cool. Still, I don't, re I don't really regret it, though. It's still, still a good console. And sometimes I'll whip it out and play a little bit. Maybe on my next trip, I'll take it and, you know, put in some work on there. Shy Guy and Piranha Plant will be in Mile Tennis Aces. Hollywood stuffs itself with largest Thanksgiving. Abandoned trademark for Agent. Yeah, that shit was announced a long time ago. Zombies no longer a sure thing as overkill. Who cares about that? I'm happy. Ha ha ha. Persona. Darksiders. Secret Agent Nun Sharon is the next scrapper. Coming to Fighting EX Lair. I'm uh, waiting on that physical from Play Asia. Noms. Do you know? Do you believe in What kind of shit is this? What is the kind of, what kind of trailer is this? All this text. You know, the reason I, I ordered that is just because, uh, you know, one, I think it's a good collector's item because there's going to be only going to be a limited amount of uh, copies sold. But also, I really mix, miss the uh, Street Fighter EX games, which um, were partly developed by the dude who is who makes the fighting EX layer games. Um, so, like, I never really heard of the fighting EX layer games. And, like, you know, I just assumed that the Street Fighter EX was made in with Capcom, you know, it's just Capcom, like from what I remembered. Um, so I didn't really know all that much about that. Um, but yeah, man, Skull of Mania is dope. And I played the demo. It, 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 it's basic and definitely needed some fine tuning, but it was a demo, you know, beta, whatever. But the gameplay was solid. It was good. I think it felt more like Street Fighter, pretty much. Just like, you know, quarter, quarter circles, baby. Cyber Monday, Red Dead Online's beta goes live for everyone. I don't even care about. It. I like I barely played Grand Theft Auto Online. Like I'll go there, I'll go on Grand Theft Auto Online, like once every few months just to like grief some people and then get bored right away. Dot emu, what's this? How to update? What is this? What is this? What is this? Is it an interview? Hmm. It might be interesting. Maybe I'll read it later. 60% of their revenue comes from October to December holiday season. What? <coughs> what? Lenovo. Len Lenovo's are horrible. They got like with like spyware and all kinds of shit in there do not buy a Lenovo ever switch game Ghostblade Proteus will bring the retro or FPS carnage next year Proteus what's this doom like okay let's see wow a lot of blood Definitely trying to push like a pixely kind of look, but like, but like in a way that's like low P 
PC settings kind of pixely. Like if you played a current game <laughs> on super low settings. Like that's what it would look like, I guess. I mean, it looks cool. It doesn't look better than uh, Strafe, which recently came out. That one, Strafe looks cool. Uh, I don't know if that's a little too loud. First look at more violent and bloody Hellboy in action. What? Hellboy's coming back. Okay, that's cool. And they just put uh, Hellboy 1 on Netflix. I need to watch that. They had Hellboy 2 on there for a while. It was like, you know, why am I going to go watch that when uh, you don't even have the first one on there? I need to watch that first. I think I've seen them both already, but it's been a long time. Whopper Crafting? What? Burger King Sweden? As Whopper Crafting? What? I don't even want to know. Nine games of the PlayStation Classic will be PAL version. It's so embarrassing, this PlayStation Classic. Uh, the PAL versions, if you don't know, run at 50 hertz. Uh, NTSC games run at 60 hertz. So that, you know, when you're in North America playing this PlayStation Classic, nine of these games are going to have a lower frame rate, a noticeably lower frame rate, um, you know, coming from a system that already has low frame rate, you know, on a lot of games because, you know, there's the, at the beginning of the, the 3D era so that sucks uh <laughs> i knew i knew from the get-go with the playstation classic you know ever since they announced there were only five of the 20 games i was like okay this is very suspect okay very suspect even though like you know buying the playstation one is you know it's still the most memorable experience for me you know, like my father drove me over to wherever the fuck, I don't know, Comp USA or some shit, Circuit City, wherever the fuck. And, uh, you know, like we picked it up, picked up Triple Play 98. You know how you did back in the day when you were a kid, like opening the box set while you're on the way home, looking at it. Got home, I hooked it up, started playing that demo disc that came with it. Woo! All the games on that demo disc. That startup, you know, it's fucking, oh man, it was so classic. And then like the, the packaging that they did for the PlayStation Classic is just like the original. It's like, it looks so good. It looks sexy, but they fucked up. Only 20 games. Nine of them are PAL. The interface is mad basic. Only one slave save slot for each game. I'm pretty sure they, they, they must have contracted this out to something else because that's not solely that's not Sony quality. And then they, they, they were found that they used some uh, emulators that they got off the internet. Like, that's just dumb, dude. Like, but, you know, whatever. They, people will buy it. People will buy the shit out of it. You know, that's why I want to do this. Uh, My PlayStation Classic is better because you can honestly, if you have a PS3 already, there's no point. There's no point in getting a classic, dude. You know, the average game costs about six dollars. That the average PS1 game costs about six dollars on PSN. Sometimes there's sales, so you know, sometimes they're a little cheaper. Although they they do less of the sales now. But you know, let's say six dollars a game. Twenty games. That's one hundred and twenty dollars. But you get to pick which games you want. A lot of people looking at the PlayStation Classic are thinking, half of those games I don't even like. I wouldn't even play. Mr. Driller. A lot of people like that. I I wouldn't I wouldn't want to want that on my PlayStation Classic. I would want Legacy of Kane. I would want, want Tomb Raider 1. I'd want Spyro. I would want Crash. You know? I would, you know, there's so many games on PlayStation 1, dude. So many hidden gems as well. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Pokemon, who cares? Cabinets. Kind of cool. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Arkham Collection, okay. Some of this news I really don't give a shit about. 
Wow, 200 million players, Fortnite. Full measurements and weight? Who cares? Fallout 76, what a train wreck. It's just, it just more and more news keeps coming out about this game. So now like the latest controversy is controversies about the collector's edition that they jipped people on gave people nylon bags when the promotion materials showed a canvas bag and they even gave canvas bags to influencers gave let me see it really bothers me that I can't see oh shit I really need to, to fix that I don't know what the hell I did but anyways but anyways, yeah, I knew Fallout 76 was going to be trash. I was like, oh, it's one of those in-between uh, Bethesda games, in-between Fallouts. But like, I, I knew from the way they described it that it was just going to be trash. Like, oh, you're just going to take, recycle a bunch of assets and uh, put multiplayer. Like, who cares? Like, and Fallout 4 was so bloated. Oh my god, it was it was so bloated. I spent like 120 hours in that game. Like, you know, with fall, with those Fallout games, like I want to explore everything because I don't want to miss whatever tiny bit of entertainment I can find. You know, sometimes you find like cool shit. But man, story was weak. Oh man, it was few, very few good moments in that game. Like when you compare it to like the, the amount of total time played, it was just like, man, just a time sink. Okay, Street Fighter. Game Awards, some game reveals. When is the Game Awards again? I forget. I forget. December 6th? Oh shit, that's what? That's this Thursday. Ooh, the Game Awards is Thursday. This thir Oh, and uh, uh, Smash Ultimate releases on Friday, I believe. And I have that pre-ordered. So now that Nintendo is allowing people to the creator program, whatever ended. So I'll stream some some Smash Ultimate as soon as it is released. So we'll do some of that. You know, I'll still, I'll still do, I'm going to still do gaming streams. Okay. But I'm thinking that instead of trying to do, you know, I think I'm just going to keep it limited and just focus more on my YouTube shit, like creating like a quality VODs. Um, I just think, I just think, I just, I just, I don't know. Like, I, I need to do something that I can use my creativity more so in. Like, just streaming a game, that's just me playing a game. I'm, like, passively creating content. No, I want to actively create good content. So, I think I might just reduce the amount of stream. And I'm just not as happy, it seems, it feels. Like, doing, you know, you know sitting there with the fucking studio lights in your face for, for you know, you know, in, in, you know, trying to stay in, 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 in the shot, trying to fucking, you know, it's just, it's not that fun for me. It's not that fun for me. Um, you know, I would rather do IRL streaming, to be honest. And once I get paid, I'm going to start doing it. I'm going to start fucking just streaming in New York, going to different cities, streaming there, doing IRL. I'd much rather do that because that allows me to go out and talk to people. And interact with people. I don't like. I don't need. I don't need to have a role. I don't need a job where I'm even more shut in and more, you know, at home. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanna. Ideally, I want my career to be about me doing, me creating, doing different novel things every week or every month you know not necessarily every day doing something different but you know constantly doing different things um and not having to sit down a lot because sitting down is not good for your health um i don't like doing it i don't like staying sitting even though like i mean that's the primary way i consume content 
is sitting down or I'm laying down. It'd be more healthy to lay down. But like when you're playing a game or something, I can't lay down and play a game. Like it, I, like I have to be immersed in there. When I'm just like all relaxed, I'm just like, oh, like I don't even care what I'm doing. So we're going to keep the Sunday morning show for sure. That for sure is going to happen every Sunday at 10 a.m. And we're going to try to make sure that we are on time for that. I'm trying to wake up early and early each day. I'm, I'm making some, some progress with that. So, you know, we'll always have the Sunday morning show unless unless uh, I say otherwise. But just keep a, keep an eye on that schedule. Make sure to follow me on Twitch if you're not following me. Make sure to sub to me on YouTube if you're not sub to me. Um, if you are on Twitter... Um, you know, follow me on Twitter. I'm the MC Faceman everywhere. Um, you know, trying to keep that branding consistent. Um, you know, I've been using that same brand for you know, like ten years or you know, almost ten years. So I gotta like, that's that's how you find me. Because if you Google the MC Faceman, I come up. If you if you Google Faceman on its own. This so might be a while before you find me. You'll probably see a lot of uh, Face Man from the A Team on there. Gregory Peck was it? Was that Face Man on the? Was it Gregory Peck? I don't know. Whatever. I barely watched the A Team back in the day, but I did watch it. Reruns and shit. Um, so yeah. Anyways, Game Awards on Thursday. Smash Brothers on Friday. Okay, okay, not bad. My. Might I actually have my fucking Switch hooked up for once. I might actually play some fucking Switch games. How about that? I'll probably just play mobile mostly. Like, I never attach that shit to my TV anymore. It's just so awkward. And it's like... I have nowhere to put it, dude. I have, like, nowhere to put it, dude. Anyways. PlayStation VR. Oh, people still buy this shit. That's an odd combination. Borderlands 2 and Beat Saber. Although, Beat Saber looks cool. Fuck VR. I'm not going to fucking jack into the Matrix. You can keep that shit. The gameplay doesn't even seem that great anyway. It's not, I'm, I'm not missing much. There's, there's tons of content that I've already missed. I don't need to feel like I'm missing out on VR. Fuck VR. I don't give a shit about VR. I am just fine looking at my fucking screens just as they are. What is this? Twilight Struggle. Bloomer, FTC. That's good. They should look into loot boxes. I'm sure a lot of kids have gotten their parents into financial trouble with that. Detour scores a live act live action cowboy bebop. Eh, I mean it could be cool. I would rather them continue the animated series. I mean it's a classic fucking anime. But uh, I would rather see them continue it with the anime. Or not too into I'm not really into live action conversions of anime. It just seems silly to me. It's like you're just you're taking something that, you know, through anime can be so expressive, so colorful, so outlandish, and then you just wanna you're gonna limit that to live action to what you can do with live action, and, and if you don't have a huge CG budget, you know you can't do some of the crazier things that look too bootleg, and then even if you got CG, it's like goddamn, I, I don't want to see CG all the time, and if I do see CG, it better be some crisp CG. Skyward Sword. From what I hear about Skyward Sword, I don't think I would like it. I feel like it'd be too grindy or something. Candyman reboot with Jordan Peele. That's that's cool. Candyman was very cool. I should get that on Blu-ray actually. Great movie if you haven't seen it. Good horror movie. Yeah, that should be a cool reboot. There's definitely some cool. Movie franchises that have uh, that could use a rebirth. <sighs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Who cares? Like seriously, 
Like Origins was dope. I'm sure Odyssey is good too, but like no more of this like buying an Assassin's Creed game uh you know that's just a spin off or a continuation of the same engine or some shit. I know they changed some stuff for Odyssey, but they didn't it's not that much different from Origins, you know. I picked up Origins you know, after a long time of not playing any Assassin's Creed games, the the last one I played before that was three, and I only played that just to see, you know, what are like some of the historical twi- twists that they put because I know American history, so it was like interesting. But it was whack. It was so bad. Oh, it was so bad. And I heard the DLC was bad, and I was more hyped for the DLC. So I was like, fuck, I'm not even gonna play the DLC. But Origins was really good. It was it was worth just taking time off. You gotta take time off from some of these franchises. They iterate so little sometimes, like game after game. It's just like more or less the same. Like Telltale games. Lego Movie 2, hype. Okay, Lego Movie 1 was really dope. I got a shine. This looks cool, actually. Let's play the trailer for this. So team up with your friends. Are you sure this thing is safe? Grab your lightsaber. This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. <laughs> Fix your starship. How's this? Use the Force. All too easy. Luke, you switched off your targeting computer. Stand up to evil. I want to know what happened to the plans they sent you. I don't know what you're talking Not about. Not bad. Not a bad Vader. Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures. Coming soon to the all new Star Wars Kids YouTube channel. That's pretty cool. Um King of Fighters. Hawkabelly 2. I still need to play 1. Soma's pretty good. Soma's pretty good. Play Soma. I need to finish that. It's just so unsettling and so creepy. It's like... <laughs> it's not It's not like not like jump scares, but like just like the atmosphere is just so like unsettling. Just like you just slowly going through like, oh my god, what is going on? Like, I still don't fully understand the, the you know, the thing, you know? You understand, you know, like some games like some horror games, you understand what's what's happening with the gameplay and stuff, and you're like, oh, okay, I get, I get, I get what the loop is like. It's not that bad, but with Soma, I'm still kind of like, what the hell is going on? But I barely played it, so I need to play that more. Hell at loose. I actually saw that trailer. It's not that impressive, but okay. Obsidian, that should be cool. A new game. Um, new Vegas was my favorite Obsidian game. They made other really good games as well. Let me check out there. The, the thing is, they've made tons of great games, but they've never been able to lock down one good pub. What is this? One good publisher. Not the mineral. Bring that up a little bit. Let's see. Who, what games did they make? So, first of all, I made uh, KOTOR 2. Everywhere are nice. Oh, Alpha Protocol. Yeah, dude. Alpha Protocol is such a good game. I mean, it's, it's a buggy mess. It's like... It's the shittiest great game you'll play, but... Or the greatest shitty game you'll play. I don't know. But it's really cool. It's it's you know it's it's like uh it's like mass it's almost like Mass Effect if it's just a straight up spy game. Damn, right off a of, right off a of protocol is a couple months later they fucking released New Vegas. That's crazy. Like if they had the pub a good publisher that was just behind them, and I mean, they were Microsoft now, so we'll see what happens with Microsoft. Like they, I think they they bought them out or something, but they 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 seem to just like the biggest thing holding them back is just not enough budgeting and uh, time to make the game that they want. Because like uh, you know, they just 
they tend to uh, rush out games and stuff like that. Uh, Vegas, I don't think, had a long development time. Um, Alpha Protocol, I'm sure, didn't have a good development time because that's just somewhat unfinished, but it's a really good, it's really good. It's really good, despite all the shitty things. Dungeon Siege is all right. Stick of Truth. Pillars of Eternity. I don't know what the ratings are like on Skyforge. I haven't even really heard of this game. Oh, it's a, it's a MMO? Damn, how many people work at Obsidian? They're just shitting out games all the time, dude. Tyranny. I heard, I heard Tyranny's good. I heard Pillars of Eternity's good. Aliens Crucible. Stormlands. Armored Warfare. So yeah, now they're working on something for Microsoft, I guess. I wonder who owns the rights to Alpha Protocol. I would not mind seeing a a remaster, a reboot, or a sequel to that. I would I would play that in an instant. But yeah, that's good. And they're gonna reveal a new a new game this Thursday. So. Some, some people have been speculating like, oh, maybe they'll try to do an open world RPG rivaling uh, Bethesda since like Bethesda is like fucking themselves right now with their PR and with the quality of their games. I haven't seen the Spider-Verse movie, but okay. I mean, it's just, it kind of, it kind of gets tiring. Because I've read a couple of those Spider-Verse comics and it's just like, there's just too much. Too much Spider-Man. Call of Duty movie. Yeah, so this was the thing about the collector's edition. They don't show the pictures of it, but the bag that people got is really bad. Like the nylon bag. Gabriella is well miffed in the live action Just Cause 4 trailer one man did all this okay let's see it's kind of hot Tank placement. <laughs> oh, what? Okay, 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 okay. And then there was a tornado. <laughs> She's so serious with it, just like. <laughs> That's funny. And then that is when he landed inside of the base like a panther and he shot <laughs> And me too. He died, me too. Weather below. <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> no way one man did all that you say. And when I find out what really happened, you will wish he had killed you. Wow. Okay. That's a really good trailer. That's actually a really good what Bro. We're on the YouTube. That was a that was a really good trailer. I thought I honestly I thought it was gonna be bad. I thought I had a feeling it would be bad, but it actually turned out to be a really good trailer. Project Judge, basically, basically Yakuza, but you're a cop now. <laughs> Great auto sport. 
1981's Route 16. Now that would be for Nintendo Switch. Really, guys? Come on. What are you charging for this old ass game, dude? $8? The fuck? Uh, people buy it, though. I mean, dude. All the scrolls blades. Jeez. Clatter. I don't know. By the thumbnail just does not look cool. It's like time exclusive. Fallout 76 review. Did they give it a four? There's no sugarcoating it. Fallout 76 comes up short at nearly everything it aims to be. It's not a good role-playing game, and it's not a good multiplayer experience. It never really feeds into the gradual RPG power fantasy, but it's also inadequate as a survival simulator. And wanting to be so much, Fallout 76 doesn't amount to much at all. But people, some people fucking play this game. This looks like a cold game screen sheet. Um, it's been out for a while, but yeah, how to play that one day? That seems fun as hell. That seems like one of those games where you play online and you're just like, "Fuck! Ah, I, I can't believe you got me!" Ah, ah, ah. So yeah, I want to check that out. Netflix cancels Daredevil. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting that Disney streaming service, but that's where this show is going. I'll tell you that right now. Freedom Planet, really good Sonic clone. I still need to play it though, but I tried it. Tried it way back in 2015, Pack no wait, not 2015, 2014 when I went to Pack South, I tried Freedom Planet. I talked to the developers. It's a pretty cool game. Assassin's Creed board game. Uh, oh man, look at all this shit, all these pieces and shit. What the fuck, bro? Brotherhood of Venice? Bro. Look at all this shit. Look how complicated that shit must be. What? Rocksteady denies it's working on a super... They should make an Adam West Batman game, damn it. I want a kooky... Crazy Adam West Batman with Batman and Joker fucking surfing behind a green screen, okay? Let me show you kids what it was all about back in the day. Show you real quick. <laughs> gonna, lear gonna learn you something, kids. I'm gonna learn you something real, real quick, kiddies. Mm oh, crow. Nationwide as you said. Yeah, baby. A routine question. Have you recently sold any war surplus submarines? And if so, to whom? Sold? 
close my eyes and I dream of something quite astonishingly different. And all my days are trances, and all my nightly dreams are where thy dark eye glances, and where thy footstep gleams. Miss Kicker, I have the Internet security dream. alert. Your computer might be fucking destructoid. Viruses. Ah! Please do not shut down or reset your Dude. computer. Dude, the following data destructoid, you fucking you bitch ass. Mmm. Credit card information. It's not a critical error. It's some bullshit ad, dude. God. See, that's the that. That's the number one complaint I have about destructoid. Okay. Their site. Seems so unsecure or just janky with the fucking ads, bro. Like, it's always been like this for years and years, no matter what they do to the site. It's just like a janky mess. I feel like I'm gonna get a fucking virus. Sometimes. But I don't think so. It's just stupid, stupid ad. Try, try, probably trying to sell you some... <sighs> some uh, shitty antivirus or something like that. But damn, that killed, killed the vibe, but I kind of want to watch some old school Adam West uh, Batman now. So I saw the uh, video they're talking about here on Impulse, whatever. Uh, the impressions. So basically, people are saying like, the gist of it is like they should have just done the old, made the old Red Dead Online available or something like they. There's a lot of work to be done. Like, I don't know. Who cares? I don't, I don't care about playing Red Dead Online. I'm still trying to beat the single player. Let me just beat the single player. Fucking put that shit right back on the shelf and get on to the next game. Lately this week, uh, I was playing a lot of. Uh, Playing a lot on my PC. Play, I was playing a lot when, when while I was medicated. I was playing a lot of uh, Shadow of Mordor and Mafia 2 uh, in 4K. So that was fun. And I recently saw a video saying that like you know 4K isn't really that great. That there's no there's very few 120 hertz 4K and then like. It's, it would have been, you know, so what I'm thinking is it probably would have been better to have gotten a 140, uh, what's it, the one, the, the fuck, what the hell do they call it? Oh, fuck. What is it, 144 or something? Um... What was it? 1440? Was it 1440p? Anyways, like a lot of there's like these the 14 I think it was 1440p. Yeah. Ooh, wow, 144 gigahertz. See, maybe I should have gotten something like this instead of my 4K um, monitor. I paid about 300 for mine. Damn, 144 hertz. Dude. Dude. 
Yeah. Maybe I should have gotten that. Well, whenever I replace my uh, LCD TV, it might be with, because I don't want a smart TV. So I might just get a big ass monitor. Um, because they get kind of big. Like, there's, is there a 39 inch one? Because I have a four, 40 inch LCD. And, uh, I mean, I don't mind going down an inch. Although, most of these are 32 inch. Let me see. I just, I'm just very curious right now. I'm just very curious. Look for, look for example. For example, for example, for example. Let's see. Where's the monitors? Let's see all the monitors. 4K? They have 5K monitors? What the fuck? 5K? The fuck? Five K, two K, nano IPS, fifteen hundred dollars. But it has three stars. Damn shit, why as fuck? Damn. Anyways, I'm trying to see. Um, let's see, gaming monitors. That would probably be the higher refresh rate ones. Where's the size? Uh, can you show me size? Maximum. Is this the max? I'm looking at 34 inches. That's not really big enough. They do have like off-brand uh, TVs and stuff that are... Uh, oh, I need to stretch a little bit. Oh, they do have some off-brand TVs that are still dumb, like dumb TVs or whatever. I think maybe Vizio has some, I don't know. It's not something that I need to worry about at this point in time. Maybe maybe next year or the year after that. I'm pretty happy with my with my 40-inch. Like, my, my entertainment system can't really hold anything much bigger, so I'm not... When I upgrade, I'm not going to focus on getting a bigger TV because that would be dumb unless I somehow had a much better entertainment center. But a lot of these entertainment centers don't give you that much space for fucking six plus consoles and shit anyway. Um, but I just want I just want like a hundred at least 120 hertz um, for uh, not 4K, but. I mean, I don't know, maybe the next year or two, maybe we'll see some 120 hertz 4K TVs at a reasonable price. And I don't know. Let me see real quick. 4K, 120 hertz uh, TV. I doubt it. Oh, you got something like this. What is this? 43 inch. Is it 120 hertz? Though? It has HDR, homie. How much is this? Dude, it's only two seventy nine. Are you kidding? But it's smart. That bullshit smart. <sighs> Motion rate one twenty. Does that does that mean one hundred twenty hertz? Hmm. Beware, <laughs> fake one hundred twenty. <laughs> like there wasn't enough to look out for. Holy crap. Think you're getting a 120 hertz TV? Hold up just a second. You might not be. Many TVs today are 60 hertz despite having motion rates and effective refresh rates claiming much higher numbers, including 120, 240, and more. TV companies are deliberately hiding the actual refresh rate from you and it's been going on for years. In some cases, some 60 hertz TVs have performance that might be slightly better than a basic 60 hertz TV. 
but lacking the hardware of a true 120 hertz TV, they can't offer nearly the same motion performance. A true 120 hertz refresh rate can improve the picture quality a bit by reducing motion blur. It's not a massive factor for most viewers, however, which is why 60 hertz TVs like the blah 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 can still rate excellent image quality. On the other hand, true 120 hertz makes a TV much more expensive than manufacturer, so it's rarely found in budget or even mid-range TVs. And even high, higher end TVs use numbers higher than what? And even higher end TVs like use numbers higher than 120 hertz to seem even better with motion. The weird part is the way manufacturers are coming up with these fake numbers isn't always total bantha guano. Allow me to explain. In the U.S., our electricity is 60 hertz, and our TV system is based around that rate. In other areas, it's 50 hertz, blah, blah, blah. Oh, God, they're going into the whole shit about hertz. And this is a... All right. Could be, well, another... A lot of promote there. But in the spec chart... That's a little... Anything higher than 120 is a fake number. There are no 240 hertz TVs. There are only 60 hertz and one. Okay. What? 4K? What? Hold on a second. Traveling. Hold on a second from NVIDIA. Hold on a second. Get five times point. Thanks to Synergy for sponsoring this video from CES 2018. Synergy 2 is... My video is not sponsored by Synergy, but hey, Synergy, if you want to, like, contact me, what's up? So, we're here in the NVIDIA suite where they are showing off the world's first big, <coughs> big format, sorry, excuse me, big format display. They're bringing big screen gaming to the PC. Now, gaming monitors that are big have already existed for quite some time. And there are even PC monitors that are as large as 42 inches. Though it should be noted that there are only a few outliers that you could really consider to be gaming monitors that are 30 inches or above. Well, that all changes today. The 65-inch monstrosity behind me checks off a 65. ton of the boxes from our video earlier January this year 8th, where we designed our ideal gaming TV. So it's got really low latency, like super low, like a monitor. It's wow. got DisplayPort and HDMI input, just like a monitor. Nice. It's got 120 hertz max refresh rate, just like a monitor. Nice. And like a high-end gaming monitor, it supports variable refresh rate with NVIDIA's G-Sync technology. So they're announcing three different models, but all of them are using a VA panel from AU Optronics with Quantum Dot Film for DCI-P3 color support and nice deep black levels. They're also using a full array backlight solution with local dimming in order to achieve 1000 nit peak brightness with the ability to support HDR. Now they haven't announced plans for Dolby Vision at this time, but it should be noted that most games Maybe there's an exception or two. You guys can leave a comment if you can think of anything. But most games are supporting HDR through HDR10 anyway. Let's talk results. Now, they haven't announced how many local dimming zones these TVs have. But if I had to guess, I'd say it's probably similar to the 4K high refresh rate monitors that they talked about at CES last year. So more than tens, but probably not you know, over a thousand, something along those lines. And in terms of results, well, Local dimming is still not OLED. So that's the thing. You can see blooms around bright objects in very dark scenes from time to time. And it was especially noticeable in menus or if you have a bright moving light moving around your character, like a, let's say like a Navi type assistant. But if that's the case, you've probably it's got been delayed. things in your life. And in general, in fast paced NVIDIA's 120 hertz 4K HDR big format gaming display is reportedly delayed. Hmm. Big format gaming display. Delayed till next year. All of the big format gaming display models that are coming out are 65 inch displays 
with a juicy 4K resolution and support for HDR. They also feature fast 100. Man, why do they? Why do they all have to be 65 inch though? Can we get a 40 something inch with this kind of shit loaded up? They also feature fast blah, 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 G-Sync. Ooh, that G-Sync too. Hmm. So AMD needs to come out with one now too. Get the free sync support. I got an AMD baby. Hmm. Easy only two monitors to have four K and one hundred forty four hertz. The predator's like five hundos. Oh no, wait. Two two racks, homie. As of May nineteen, two racks. Two bands. Boil bean. Uh huh. Twenty seven inch. The new monitor I got is sixty hertz four K uh LG. Um I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest. Like, I mean, I, I, I came from a fucking, I moved from a fucking Sync Master E1920 Samsung little 19 inch, John. It's my old computer over there. So going from that to this 27 inch LG. 4K was a good move. Was a good move. I don't regret it. I, don't know. I probably should have gotten a 1440p, 144 hertz fucking display, but it's all good. Like I'm definitely, I know it's it's fine. It's it's fine. So I don't need to up. I don't need to upgrade my monitor for another like long time at least four or five years and by then they'll have fucking ridiculous dis ridiculous monitors they'll have 4k 144 hertz everywhere but i'm definitely looking forward to man i, I would oh, i would love i would love to have a 40 inch fucking 4k with 120 hertz bro that would be so sick and get the 4k Elgato so I can stream like in true like fucking 4k and just generally enjoy my content in 4k I love playing games on this monitor it's like it just looks so crisp so crisp killer 7 I bought this back in the day on PS2 played it for a little bit and I'm just like this game sucks dude I gave it a five, the the remaster. I mean, it's not that great of a game. I don't know why people, well, at least to me, I don't know why people are so, so into Killer Seven. So these are the bags that the influencers got from Fallout seventy six. That still isn't the same bag. It's still not. It's more like a book bag, honestly. It's still not the same bag that they had in the promotional materials. Um, that's funny. They're just Bethesda just. Purposefully, purposefully being scammers, yeah. They're just purposefully scamming people. And Todd Howard does not give a shit, dude. He's just lying straight to your face, homie. That ain't good, bro. It makes me not want to buy any of your games, bro. Okay, Dark Sires 3. That's a crisp image. I'll give it an 8. It's not bad. And let's see if there any news just dropped just now. Let's see. No, that's it. So that's it for gaming news. That's it for the Sunday show. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you tuned in, I really appreciate it. If you could give me a follow on Twitch, give me a subscribe on YouTube, like my videos. All of those hoops 
that I gotta get you to run through in order for me to be successful on these online streaming platforms. Because without your support, I'm just a fucking loser talking into a mic to nobody. And then my I have no purpose. Then my purpose is null. So, you know, that's part of the journey. Try, trying to find my purpose. But we're going to keep the Sunday show going. Even though, you know, I get more viewers when I'm streaming like Street Fighter or some shit like that. I like the Sunday show. It's a good time slot for me. You know, get thing, get something done early in the morning on a Sunday. And, uh, you know, when I start working full time, it'll be easy to continue uh, with the Sunday morning show. Um, and I'll continue to stream gaming like maybe once or twice a week, you know, uh, on other days. And I'll try to keep that interesting as much as I can. But, you know, I I mean, it's it's it, it's been hard to go past even two hours streaming like, you know, like I. Because naturally, I don't I don't really game for a long time unless it's like a single player experience that um, I'm immer completely immersed in. That you know the story is great and stuff. And the game that I had on PS4 for that was Red Dead, and it's like you know I was streaming that. No, nobody really tuned in for that because like a bunch of other people were were checking out Red Dead uh, on different channels because a lot of people were were streaming it. And then when that kind of fell off. People just got tired of Red Dead already, and like you know, they, they're not gonna watch someone streaming Red Dead, um, you know, just some random person. So I gotta think a little bit about that, but I do want to concentrate more on my YouTube videos and thinking of ideas for that, and getting back to my original ideas of like doing game reviews, uh, things like that, and uh, yeah. So you know, just follow me, like uh, what you know. Join the team, you know, help me, uh, help me grow, you know, experience the growth from the ground floor. Cause best believe this is the fucking ground floor. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking underneath the ground floor technically. Um, but I need your support. I need your support. I, you know, even the smallest thing, even the smallest, like, hello, or I like the video, or even if you didn't like the video, help me, help, tell me what you didn't like about it. I, I need that feedback. I need that feedback. Without, without honest feedback, you know, I'm just going to be ending up doing the same shit unless I get different ideas out of nowhere. So, uh, you know, thank you for those who have been, uh, you know, tuning in regularly i appreciate you i definitely appreciate you you know uh, you know i know i know it can be uh you know i know i know it's a real scuffed operation we got going on right now with this channel here on twitch and with youtube you know i really need to bring up my my uh video quality production quality on on everything and uh you know improve my editing skills and things like that i think that's going to be the route to find some success um because streaming on Twitch for, you know, streaming games on Twitch can be, it's just not something that is for me, I think, like for like a full-time thing to be just streaming games. Like I like to get up. I like to get out. I want to do IRL streaming. I want to get like the unlimited vill, like pocket modem and like go out and fucking talk to people. That would be, that'd be great. Getting fresh air and everything. Oh, well, anyways. That's it for the for the show. Um, I think it, I think you know this might have been the best one yet, best episode yet. So let's get. You know, I think we're doing okay. I think we're doing okay. Um, you know, I like this show. I like going over the news a little bit, and uh, you know, just talking about uh, you know vlogging a little bit, telling you about what's going on in my life. Because, like I said, I need you know, I need people to talk to. I need I need I need somewhere to vent. So. And I really ought to go back to making some more music too, but it's it's like the thing is like I'm at the age where I need to be able to uh, pay bills and shit. And like, there's so many hip hop artists in New York, and everybody's really just out out for their own. And uh, you know, but but I do miss making music. That was a a good part of my life where I was able to take all the negatives in my life and like kind of filter that and you know concentrate that into something good you know just like 
you know, convert that to good shit, you know. So, yeah, I definitely need to get back into that because I do miss that and I do miss performing, you know. Uh, but, you know, it's, it, sometimes you got to try different things and see where, where, you're, where, you're, where your niche is. And I'm still kind of trying to figure that out. I'm still trying to figure it out. And I, 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 thought, I thought by this age I would have my life figured out. But let me tell you, life is tough. And the sooner you figure it out, the better. So if you are a young person watching this, you know, you're under 30. You still have time to make the, the changes that you need to make to be successful. But you need to do it now. You need to take it seriously. Or else you're going to be me at 33 years old and thinking, uh, you know, what the fuck, what the fuck was I doing with my life all these years? You know, like, why am I, you know, why am I not, not progressing the way I want to progress? Um, but, um, you know. It is what it is. Just got to take what life, life gives you and try to, you know, try to convert that into some good shit. And uh, hopefully, you know, karma will will reward you in the end. Um, because if you go looking for the reciprocation, you're not going to find it. I've helped many people. I've given money to people. Never gotten anything in return um, for most of them. So, you know, I don't know, man. It makes me not want to do that anymore. It makes me not want to really help people out like that anymore. At least people that I know. Because then I'm going to be irritated like, oh, like, hey, I fucking gave you a couple hundred dollars. Like, you know, you're not going to like fucking you, you, you got help you get out of your financial situation. You're not going to help. You're not going to help me out or you're not going to pay me back or, you know, this one chick. And I'll say her name, fucking Joy Sanchez. Joy Sanchez, you're a fucking scumbag, okay? Because this person is like an, an acquaintance that I met through the New York scene, the, the hip hop scene. Uh, we got a lot of mutual friends, and like she was trying to put out a poetry book, and she needed funding. I gave her like three hundred something dollars to print the books. She never gave me one cent back. I mean, I filled out a contract and everything, but I'm like, you know, for $300, like, it's a lot of money, but is it worth me taking her to small claims court and all that shit? She got kids. She's kind of like a fucking bomb. Like, you know, like, I figured I'll just let karma handle it because, like, I'm not going to fucking go through all that shit. She got, her life is fucked up enough, but she shouldn't have taken my money. I shouldn't have given her my money. You don't give broke ass people money. People who don't manage money well don't give them any money. Let me tell you, it's not a, it's not it's not going to be good for you unless you're willing to just uh, never see that money again. Like you just want to feel good about yourself. Yeah, yeah, just fucking give them some money. But you know, I I would rather give to people who really really need it. Um, like you know, people who like. Are victims of like storms or like in other countries like of uh you know whatever natural disasters or you know shit like that but it's hard to find a reputable nonprofits to really to get that off the ground so anyways i'm gonna stop talking uh hey i think we had a good show thank you for tuning in uh this was the sunday morning show december 2nd 2018 and once again i am your host dmc faceman once again, please follow me on Twitter. Please sub to me on YouTube. Please follow me on Twitch. All that good stuff. I do need your support. That's the only way this uh, channel can grow and that uh, you know I can have the, the motivation to create more good shit. All right, guys. So take it easy, y'all. Y'all have a great Sunday and uh, have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday at 10 a.m. Right here on twitch.tv forward slash the MC Faceman. And I'm out.